We'll ring the Vajra bell for a little, uh, get this started this morning. You know, the, the San Francisco Bay Area has been a wonderful place for a long time for many people. First we had gold, then we had silver, then we had trade, then we had the results of the money that was made and great universities were formed here. And as a result of that, Silicon Valley became a reality. And today we're celebrating the benefits of that new phenomenon in this great part of the world. We're very blessed and it's a great pleasure to have all of you here. You're all very welcome. There's some particularly wonderful people in the audience that I'd like to mention. Uh, Bill Lee, the Chief Administrative Officer of, the San of San Francisco. Maura Kopp, Quentin's wife. Uh, Council Jenner Nanao of, Jap of Japan. Marjorie Stern has been a great supporter of the museum over the years and also a steam stem winder in building the new library downtown. Fritz Jewett, who was the original uh, chairman of the uh, commission of the uh, Asian Art Museum, and many others of you here that uh, uh, are very, very welcome. I would like now to introduce Ian Wilson, the chairman of the boards of this museum, and we'll move on. Thank you, Jack, and let me uh, add my voice of welcome to all of you on this great occasion. Um, with the sun breaking through as, as, as we do this is very appropriate because today we begin our $30 million march uh, from here to the Civic Center. We take another major step along the path to fulfill our dream of establishing the largest freestanding Asian art museum in the Western world. And we're wonderfully fortunate to start our parade with a bang of epic proportions. An anchor gift of $15 million from board member and benefactor Chong Moon Lee to establish the Chong Moon Lee Center for Asian Art and Culture. This huge sum represents This huge sum represents the largest gift from an Asian, and particularly an Asian American, to any American museum in the history of giving. It also represents as large a gift as there has been in the history of San Francisco philanthropy. But it the establishment of the Chung Moon Lee Center for Asian Art and Culture represents more than just those, those issues. Um, more than just a major gesture of generosity. It represents support from the Asian community, vital to our future. It represents the viability of our dream of the new Asian. But most important of all, it represents the deep felt idealism of one man, Chong Moon Lee, who believes absolutely that culture can bridge gaps between nations, can bring nations together, and that culture and art is the basis of understanding and goodwill amongst the people of the world. And he really believes that as deeply as any, any man I, I have met. And, and that belief is at the very core of our existence. That's what we're about, is, is bringing culture and art to people in just that way. The center represents what I think will need to be the museum of the next mil millennium, a living organism, something that reaches out to the communities it serves, something that is vibrant and alive, and, and having the, the Brundage Collection and the Asian Art Museum in this wonderful Center for Asian Art and Culture represents, I think, what the future of museums is all about. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is, is, is what today will do. And so without further ado, I'd like to introduce our good friend and benefactor extraordinaire and say with all of you, Chung Moon, thank you very much indeed. 
and we are most delighted and lucky and fortunate to have you. Thank you. See, uh, Council General uh, Nanao, is he here this morning? Okay. Uh, I uh, I have a reason for doing this, and uh, the reason for doing this is, of course, way of paying back to this community, to this country. I think I've been saying this a few occasions, I do not find other uh, words or other way of expressing why I do this. Because I cannot find a better way, I just repeat the same thing again. I think it is very straightforward. I owe to this country. This country gave me education, gave me job, gave me opportunity to learn business, gave me opportunity to work with excellent engineers. I've been proudly being American manufacturer I service my customer better. You know how computer industry is. But I try to do better for my people in, within company and to my customers, to the end users. Working with my company, for my company, what well, my company I owned, now is a public company, I never said, 13 years until the time I took this company to uh, IPO, I intentionally never mentioned, never said my company. I hate that word. I always had our company. I gave 39% of sh stocks to my employees. First, in Silicon Valley, gave 39% of option to the employee. That's the biggest. The amount we raise out of IPO, we raised $127 million. Biggest IPO in high tech in America last two years. God gave me this opportunity. Of course, I had hot life. I really hold pistol in my hand, try to kill myself because I had just, I cannot handle this problem, the situations. I had no money and I broke and the bank came to my house and uh, I mean, I went through all that. 
I recall all this hardship tells me that's the beauty that enriched my hardship enriched my life. So I can talk about it. I can talk to young people. In that sense, I'm very blessed, fortunate. How all did it happen? This society gave me this. I hope I can share some of asset. I can share in different ways, all pay back to this country. When first generation, we as first generation came to this country, we took advantage of everything existing here. You know, I'm on the medication, but not, not a life-threatening. And I had a pain in the last Saturday night, but 1.30 in the morning uh, in the hospital, and then a uh, doctor said, tell me the scale, pain scale from one to 10, where are you? I look up him from bed, I said, 2,000. <laughs> he laughed about it. Hey, you're joking, you're not, you don't have pain enough. Doctor, I'm telling you the truth, does. I heard that Chongmunli Center, which is great honor for me, and uh, museum and the city, and uh, I think my attorney uh, discussed about it. This is a great honor for me. I just recall that Jack Benny phrase, he said, I don't deserve that honor. And then I have arthritis, I don't deserve that either. <laughs> I'm the same way. Thank you. <laughs> Returning to San Francisco encouraged me the people sitting here. Ian and Jack, our proud mayor. He's very, very motivated. He visited himself all Asian countries for business ties and cultural ties. First ever, he brought Sian Exhibit to San Francisco. He brought in Mongolian, first ever. He played a major role for moving this Asian art museum. Airport, you know, this is a sensitive time, so I shouldn't be a part of a campaign, so Please don't misunderstand that. But I like to mention the mayor I've ever seen being in this country 36 years altogether. Culturally oriented, nice on people, and tough on business. I like to mention one thing. I know he has a problem. Let me tell you uh, what he has, uh, what problem he has. In Japan's history, there are three most respected prime minister. One is Sato. He had his wife's sister's husband, Mr. Anzai. After I uh, returned to Korea, I got the master's degree from uh, this country, and then I've uh, been a businessman, and then I represent Japan in a Korea talk. Uh, that was 1963, uh, uh, 4, 5, 
those days. So I was a part of a delegation because the Korean government wants to have one delegation member American educated. So I speak Japanese and uh, also I can, you know, uh, with a uh, after World War II generation type. Mr. Anzai was a uh, sort of a uh, brother-in-law uh, with the uh, Sato Prime Minister. Uh, he's a very well respected. He has about 40,000 employees. You know, many cases, Japan politics and the uh, industry work together. People came to Mr. Anzai because he's very respected and the rich and the with a uh, you know, uh, brother-in-law with the Prime Minister. Why don't you run? for the Congress and they become political figure. You have money, you have everything. Well, I may, I may. So he, he tried once. <coughs> so he'd been elected. Before term end, he made an announcement, I'm stepping down. The people shocked and asked at him, why? His answer is a very simple. You know what? Being a businessman in the industry, to your employee or to the industry, if you lie once, you'll be dead. Being in politics, if you don't lie every day, you will be dead. <laughs> That's our honorable <coughs> mayor, Frank Jordan, have a problem today. He cannot lie. <laughs> the other side of the spectrum, the guy has a popularity in that level. Who buys it? I don't know. Coming back to our museum, we need cultural establishment with Asia than ever before. I like to just hit one. Wants to you to know why it is. Today many people says Central Pacific Rim or Age of Asia. Futuristic scholars and the economists start talking about this early 70s. I really wondered why and how. 30 years ago, 40 years ago from today, after liberated, tell me any country in Far East and Asia can provide three meals a day to their own people. Tell me if you know. They couldn't even feed three meals a day. Asia, always behind. Starvation. If not, war or fighting with the neighboring countries. Asia came strong last 20 years. How? And the why. I like to mention very simply who Asia is that we are dealing with and that we know. They are all colony or taken or occupied by outsiders, foreigners, particularly Westerners. Let me tell you. Hong Kong by British. World War II, during World War II by Japanese. Singapore by British. World War II by Japanese. Burmese, Burma by British, during the World War II by Japanese. Laos by French, during the World War II by Japanese. Thai during the World War II by Japanese, Taiwan by Japanese, Korean by Japanese, Malaysia by British, 
and the Filipinos by Spaniard, American, and the Japanese during the World War II, Indonesia, Portuguese, British, and Dutch. India by British, China taken by several, and then mainly by Japanese, Manchuria, under that area also. What it means to us, it tells us many things. I do not want to go through this, and I want you to think about this. These are the areas they are that we are dealing with. What America has done when their economy explosively grew, what America did. I'd like to mention here what America did. Number one, you know, the last 40 years, the 50 years after World War II, there are over 2 million Asians came to this country and studied. Half of them paid by American government, Fulbright, American Foundation, Asia Foundation, all other foundations, and or university scholarships. They all studied here. We provide them education. Half of them paid by America. All these countries that American government economic assistance programs, such as USAM, AID, in each countries, helped them last 40 years. Many countries, the first 10 years after liberated, American aid could not reach. But Japan, Korea, Taiwan, this area, yes, it did. We taught them, America financed them, loaned them, even organized the International Financial Consortium to make their economy off the hook. Third, America provide them technology to the level that they needed. Taught them how to produce, how to make it economically and uh, competitively. Fourth, not only train them, finance them, provide them technology. With all this, you manufacture product come and sell on my yard and make money. Today, China mainland have most favorite nation status. Since 1971, after uh, China had been accepted by United Nations member, I don't think any one of you seen or heard that China stood American side in international politics. Even today, we have a problem, yet they enjoy most favored nation status. Four element, America provided. You see automobile negotiation with Washington and Japan, how difficult it is. I have uh, lots of good Japanese friends, and, uh, and my wife's Japanese. You know, Korean and Japanese don't mix together, but there are some exceptions. <laughs> but three, four weeks ago, I heard that the Washington the negotiator said, as far as the automobile is concerned, closing shut the market off. Koreans are even worse than Japanese, so. 
negotiation. We need to understand culture. It's not hard number. It's not negotiation scale, not style. It's a culture. This country need today somewhere in the country understand Asian history, Asian culture, lifestyle, how they work. We need that organization in this country somewhere. This is it. We have art collection, we have a people, we have hardworking mayor, all this leadership in the museum and the community. This is the right place for us act like living bridge between Pacific, where the country where we are from as first generation, or are from American side understand theirs. Also, we have to be evangelist to show sophisticated Asians to understand America's openness, fairness, level field competition and the spirit try to help others, which, as I indicated earlier, how we help Asia. I think it's about time that I should shut my mouth up here. I think I did long enough. Thank you very much. It is a great honor for me, and I hope I can do more rest of my life with wonderful leaders in the community. Thank you very much. And I'd like to ask Chung Wen to come across and, and unveil the red thing we have. You know, honestly, I didn't expect this. Honestly, oh boy, this heart felt. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you very much. Wow. I'd now like to introduce um, the Honorable Chung Ha Lee, um, General Consul, uh, Consul General for Korea. Uh, Chung Ha, would you? Thank you very much, Yang. Uh, this is the uh, one of the few occasions that uh, I'll be uh, reading off of a text, prepared text, uh, lest I'll go over uh, the allotted time for me. And uh, if you see any. Um, uh, hints of what uh, Chong Wen Lee and Ian uh, Wilson have said uh, previously uh, in my uh, speech. Uh, I have not consulted uh, with uh, either of them. Um, Mr. Chong Wen Lee, uh, Mayor Frank Jordan, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Uh, this morning I have a very pleasant task of saying a few words in honor of uh, Chairman Chong Wen Lee. On behalf of the Korean government and people, I would like to thank Mr. Chong Mun Lee for the gift and his far-sighted vision. Mr. Lee certainly is one of the best friends of mine that I came to like and respect while serving as the Consul General in this beautiful city of San Francisco. Chairman Lee certainly appreciates 
the importance of the role of art and culture in promoting mutual understanding. We often speak of friendships and cooperation between Korea and the United States. But without a fundamental and proper appreciation of the other's culture, cultural heritage and historical tradition, true understanding of the other would be severely limited. One of the best ways of understanding the other, I believe, is through the medium of history, art, and culture. In this sense, Mr. Chongman Lee's contribution to promoting Korea-U.S. friendship and cooperation is truly far-reaching and visionary. Mr. Lee has expressed to me that he is doing this as a gesture of returning to this community and the American society for what the letter has given him in his pursuits and endeavors, namely higher education, the free enterprise system, and democratic values. This is indeed a noble gesture and a time-honored American tradition. More important, however, is his perception that the beauty and integrity of the East, East Asian art and culture need to be preserved and shown to his fellow Americans. By his generous gift to the Asian Art Museum, Mr. Lee has strengthened the foundation of the cultural bridge we have been building together between East Asia and the United States. The significance of Mr. Lee's choice of the Asian Art Museum in San Francisco as the beneficiary of his charitable gift is twofold. First, it is the only museum outside of Korea that has permanent exhibits of Korean art and artifacts. Second, San Francisco is home to the largest number of East Asian immigrants in the United States. I would like to applaud Mr. Lee in his wisdom of choosing the San Francisco Asian Art Museum in recognition of such. I trust that this Trans-Pacific Bridge Mr. Lee helped to strengthen will serve as an important conduit of communication, mutual understanding, and appreciation, thereby contributing to a lasting U.S.-Korean friendship and cooperation, and I trust that many more Korean-Americans will follow his example in the years ahead. It has been said that American style is dynamic, whereas the East Asia's, at least uh, traditionally, uh, tends to embrace static lifestyles. But in my view, the essence of understanding each other lies, paradoxically, in detecting and appreciating the stable and balanced aspects of out of the dynamic American life and the dynamism underlying the idyllic East Asian life. In short, in our efforts to emphasize our own merits, we may have often failed to appreciate the merits of the other. Mr. Lee's marvelous gift now makes it possible for us and for our children to redress this disparity and regain the balance we may have misplaced over this turbulent century so that the new century we usher in together will be more enlightened, more enriching, and more prosper pros prosperous for all. Thank you, Mr. Chungman Lee, for your wonderful gift. Your noble gesture will be long remembered by the Korean people everywhere and cherished by the American people at all times. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to introduce the Honorable Milton Marks, Senator, 3rd District, State of California. Sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here on this very happy occasion. I want to thank Chung Mun Lee for his great contribution to San Francisco, the state of California, because this is an institution that represents the whole state of California. I'm speaking here as a representative of the state of California, as a senator in the state of California. I recognize the great contribution that he has made. I also, one of the committees that I serve upon in the California legislature is the Pacific Rim Committee. And therefore, I listen with great interest to your remarks. We are doing all we possibly can, the state of California, to promote the interests of the Pacific Rim with San Francisco, 
which is a entry to the Pacific Rim, and I appreciate the opportunity of being here. The people of San Francisco, along with our children and grandchildren, who reap the benefit of this year, for you, this gift for years to come. Let me thank you very, very much again, the people of California. Next is our good friend, and he has been a good friend to us, the Honorable Frank Jordan, Mayor of the City. And Frank, my advice to you, and I, I'm sure you don't need it, is I would take Chong Moon everywhere you go. <laughs> <laughs> Mayor Jordan. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very, very true words, Ian. And uh, distinguished guests uh, here at the diocese and distinguished guests in the audience and ladies and gentlemen, I can't help but uh, comment on what uh, Chong Moon Lee said about politicians must be honest. Tell the truth. It's very true because it reminds me of a story about uh, former President Harry Truman. Uh, he used to have comments made about him that always said, give him hell, Harry. Uh, but Harry Truman said, I never gave them hell. I just told them the truth and they all thought it was hell. <laughs> I, too, am very pleased to be here as the mayor of San Francisco uh, to honor someone who has not only been a good friend, but also uh, uh, a gentleman who just really has been a great asset to the entire San Francisco and Bay Area, and that is Chong Moon Lee. Now, I want to thank you, Chong Moon, for your generous contribution and for your ongoing commitment to our efforts to maintain the San Francisco Asian Art Museum as the largest and most prestigious of its kind in the Western world. Uh, Commissioner Lee's contribution, as you know, will play a significant role in financing now the new Asian Art Museum and in the revitalization of the Civic Center Plaza area. I commend his vision and his generosity and his understanding of the importance of learning and appreciating the cultures of other nations and his wish that the arts and cultures of Asia are better known in the Western world. He is not just talking about it, his actions today are very, very dramatic and ones that we are all very, very proud of. As you know, San Francisco is in the midst of one of the most ambitious public works agendas in the nation. More than $4 billion in construction and renovation projects are right now underway, creating thousands of jobs that we need today and for the future. Clearly, San Francisco is preparing itself for the 21st century, and it's also, as you've heard here today, going to be known as the Asian century, the Pacific Rim century. We have made it a priority to establish San Francisco as the gateway to the Pacific Rim, and our public works agenda strongly reinforces that commitment. For example, earlier this week, I broke ground for the new international terminal at the SF International Airport, which will increase our passengers from 31 million to 51 million per year. While urban centers around the nation are struggling to survive, San Francisco's Civic Center Revitalization Program symbolizes our commitment to maintaining San Francisco's stature as a world-class city and certainly Chong Moon Lee is adding his dimension today. In many ways, we're experiencing our own renaissance period. The state-of-the-art new main library scheduled to open in January places San Francisco in the forefront of the information superhighway, the restoration and retrofit of City Hall, the War Memorial Opera House, the Civic Auditorium. They will all ensure that we can hold on to this beautiful and historic symbols of the past, but also blend them, blend them with the symbols of the future such as the new main library, the new courthouse, the state building, and now our new Asian Art Museum. It also ensures San Francisco's role in expanding opportunities for millions of people to discover and to understand the rich artistic cultural traditions of Asia. The Asian Art Museum, as you've heard Chang Moon Lee state earlier, we've had two excellent exhibitions, one the Xi'an warriors from China, and also the legacy of Genghis Khan, through the Mongolian exhibit that was here just a short few weeks ago. The new Asian Art Museum will enable us to continue this important tradition and to maintain our prominent role in the Asian art world. So I want to personally thank, on behalf of all the people of San Francisco, I want to thank Chang Moon Lee for your ongoing support, your certainly your generous contribution, and also your vision for why you wanted to do this in the first place. The citizens of San Francisco and I, as the mayor, are extremely grateful, and I want to present you with a proclamation 
I've said some of the words, and I want to just read some of the, uh, maybe the last couple of paragraphs. This comes from a grateful citizenry of San Francisco. It says, the Honorable Chung Moon Lee has been the outstanding, an outstanding success and leader his entire life in the academic sector, the pharmaceutical industry, as a member of the Olympic Committee, an officer of UNESCO, also the founder of Diamond Multimedia Systems, and now today, this wonderful, wonderful gesture of a new Asian Art Museum donation. Therefore, be it resolved that I, Frank Jordan, mayor of the city and county of San Francisco, in honor of his dedication to the goal of bringing the wonders of Asian culture to all of our citizens, do hereby proclaim today, October 19, 1995, as Chong Moon Lee Day in San Francisco. Next, I'd like to introduce somebody who I'm sure doesn't mind me calling a really old friend of this institution. Someone who, with Marjorie Sellers, uh, Jim Gerstley, Fritz Stewart, who are here today, uh, was in at the very genesis of, of, of this institution. Uh, Ex-mayor, former mayor of the city of San Francisco, the Honorable Joseph Eliotta. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Mr. Mayor, Commissioner Lee, ladies and gentlemen, there was an imperialist poet who was so wrong, so wrong when he said the east is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet. Thank God nobody took him seriously. And one of the first folks who didn't take him seriously was a forebearer of mine named Marco Polo, who decided it might be a pretty good idea to open up <laughs> communications. And there followed from that renaissance Italians who went to the east and built great universities three and four hundred years ago and established the kind of cultural ties that our imperialist poet didn't envision. Then there were other people who didn't believe that East is East and West is West and never the twain shall meet. And one of those was Avery Brundage. Avery Brundage started this great collection and argued for a long time on where it would repose. And thank God we had what I called at one time the quartet from La Boheme. That's Jim and Fritz and Marjorie and Jane, who ultimately convinced Mr. Brundage that he should bring it to San Francisco. And there were others, too, who didn't believe that east is east and west is west and never the twain shall meet. There was something called the Korea Society, founded by General Van Fleet. And I was pleased to be a director of that for a period of time when I was in private life. And that society, got the American corporations, principally those on the West Coast, to donate money for the purpose of bringing, giving scholarships to Koreans to bring them here. And I kept hoping in my own mind and in my own heart when our distinguished commissioner said that he was one of those who was educated in America, that might, that might have been the genesis of it all. At that time, I learned through that Korea society and subsequently, because there's a peculiar fact, the Californians have shipped huge quantities of California rice, which is akin to the rice grown by the Koreans, to Korea, 500,000 tons of it at a time, in connection with food for peace programs and making certain credits available, but all operating within the free enterprise system. And that kind of a gesture of feeding those who desperately needed food and also to stabilize the price of rice in Korea when it was being used as a political, as a political tool. So we are very grateful to him for recognizing that how wrong, how wrong that Kipling was about East is East and West and West. We are grateful too to Frank Jordan, Mayor Jordan, who has recognized that in the final analysis the central city besides doing everything else it has to do has to promote the arts and the humanities to the extent not just for the citizens of San Francisco, but for the citizens of what Gertrude Atherton called Golden Gate Country, everybody in this area and ultimately throughout the United States. We cannot compete with anybody on Renaissance art these days because of the inflation in Renaissance art. 
but we have the very best of Asian art. And to foster Asian art in San Francisco becomes of primary importance. And we are grateful to Commissioner Lee for giving this missile that was shot into the air by our distinguished quartet from La Boheme. We are grateful to him for giving it that second spin that's going to bring it to even greater heights and that will demonstrate to the nation that San Francisco is truly the center of the arts and the humanities. We remain, and a great tribute to Frank Jordan that he has stayed on this path, we remain second only to New York in terms of the developments of the arts and culture. And it has a very practical aspect as well as a cultural aspect or a spiritual aspect. So we are grateful to you, Commissioner Lee. Uh, coming over here this morning, my wife reminded me and called attention to a poem that she found endearing. It was written by a contemporary, and actually the title of the poem is, My Baby Has No Name Yet. And in it, he talks about what numberless texts I examined at dawn and night and evenings over again, but not one character did I find a character that was sufficient to match the beauty of this baby they so dearly love. How wonderful that our baby now has this name above us. Thank you very much, Commissioner Lee. And next, it's my pleasure to introduce someone without whose hard work, dedication, leadership, this, this institution would certainly not be where it is. Uh, former head of the Foundation and Commission, and currently head of the New Asian Committee, Judy Wilbur. Thank, th thank you, Ian, very much for that <clears throat> excuse me, kind introduction. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to be here today. Um, I find it a little difficult to follow such wonderful speakers who have expressed such appreciation to Chung Moon Lee. But I too would like to pick up on something that he said, which is being honest and keeping the promise. And I wish to personally thank him for making me an honest woman. <laughs> the reason that I... <clears throat> Now, the reason that I say this is that we endeavored for two years to pass a bond measure, which I am terribly pleased to say that last year we passed yes on B, the bond measure for $41 million, which enabled the city to provide the funds for the renovation of the Old Maiden Library and its seismic upgrade. Without the tremendous support of the voters of the city of San Francisco, again, another piece in this puzzle would not be here. As a condition to that, we, the Asian Art Museum, said that the private sector would provide the necessary funds to refurbish the interior of the building. And that is today what has just begun and indeed made it a reality. Um, I would also like to acknowledge Kevin Shelley, who, the board of the president of supervisors, who unfortunately had to leave early, but he in, oh, where, he is coming back. Uh, uh, so, um, Kevin was the one who very kindly introduced the uh, legislation to the board of supervisors last year, enabling us to put the bond measure forth. So once again, we appreciate on behalf of the Commission, the Foundation, and the people of San Francisco, our great uh, thanks to you, Commissioner Chung Moon Lee, for all that you have done. Thank you. And just in time, the Honorable Kevin Chen. <laughs> Thank you very much. I uh, apologize for having to have uh, left the uh, dais here and uh, confused the uh, proceedings, uh, Judy. The reason I had to leave temporarily was to make a series of phone calls because it's a very difficult uh, item pending at the Board of Supervisors uh, Committee right now related to the future of the Embarcadero. And we're trying to reach some kind of consensus uh, as we speak here. Speaking of confusing and difficult items at the Board of Supervisors, which I'm sure surprises you that that would happen uh, there. 
there is an item that uh, we will be initiating on Monday that certainly will not be difficult, confusing, or controversial. And that will be an item uh, commending the extraordinary contributions, not only financially, but in terms of his spirit, as I think we all observed uh, today, of Chung Moon Lee. Uh, I suspect we'll have unanimous support for that particular uh, measure. And it's a real tribute uh, to his generosity and to his uh, integrity as a person uh, that we can uh, agree in unanimity uh, to commend his extraordinary contribution to this city. And it's not just a one-time contribution, it's a long-term commitment, as I think you heard uh, in his comments today, a long-term commitment not only to the future of the Asian Art Museum, but to the future of all uh, San Francisco. Because what makes the Asian Art Museum so special is that it, it is uniquely reflective of the wonderfully diverse communities of our city and the cultural and artistic achievements that our community, as well as uh, places throughout the world, make to San Francisco, making it without question, easy for me to say, if I didn't say it, I wouldn't get elected, the finest city in the world. Uh, very briefly, on a personal note, uh, apart from the kind reference from Judy as being the author of the bond measure moving this uh, passage through the board, on a personal note, in the mid-1960s, I was here uh, with my father, uh, former Mayor Jack Shelley, as we received uh, the initial uh, contributions from the Avery Brundage uh, collection to begin the process of the uh, Asian Art Museum, which uh, my father's successor, uh, Joe Aliotto, uh, uh, expanded uh, uh, enormously. And so it's a real personal privilege for me and a sense of uh, continuity to be here as president of the Board of Supervisors and an enormous personal pride uh, to join with the many distinguished individuals today in commending this extraordinary achievement. One person, in my view, needs to be singled out apart from Chung Moon Lee, and there are so many. Uh, clearly, Mayor Jordan, as everyone has spoken, and his leadership and his vision for the future of this uh, museum is extraordinarily important. But the person who just preceded me on the podium, I think all of you know with the difficulty of passing measures, bond measures in San Francisco, it's not as easy as it once was 10, 20, 30 years ago. And the commitment and the savvy and the tireless effort of Judy Wilbur made it happen. And we wouldn't be here today, and we wouldn't be moving down to the old main library if it weren't for her role in this whole effort. And I would just like to use this opportunity to recognize that. Thank you very much. This is really quite a very special day. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin, and uh, thank you again, Judy. Finally, and it is finally, uh, it's yet another pleasure for me to introduce uh, someone uh, who's shown on your program as acting director. I'm delighted to say that I introduce Emily Sano uh, as Director Designate. Emily? Ladies and gentlemen, Commissioner Lee, the leadership of this museum, the commissioners of the Asian Art Commission and the trustees of the Asian Art Museum Foundation established new directions for this museum in June of this year. They charged us with a mission and that mission is to lead a diverse global audience to discover the unique material, aesthetic, and intellectual achievements of Asian art and culture. Thanks to Chung Moon Lee, we now know that our home, our new home in Civic Center, is perfectly situated to achieve that mission. We will now be able to renovate the interior for galleries that will showcase this splendid collection that embodies all of the intelligence, the technical brilliance, and the artistry of more than 41 Asian countries. We will 
showcase those masterpieces. We will provide visible storage to to show their, the depth and scope of the collection. And we will have, in addition to that, vastly expanded education spaces where we can have hundreds of children, hundreds of children come and experience brush painting and calligraphy and the stories of Ganesh. This is a place where adults will come to experience their heritage, their heritage of the past as well as that of the contemporary present. And we will make the new Asian a destination for the visitor to San Francisco as well as to the community. We will form partnerships that will lead the Asian Art Museum to be the anchor in Civic Center and for the bridge that faces the Pacific that reaches to Asia in the 21st century. And we are immensely grateful to Chung Moon Lee for validating the work of this museum, its leadership, and its staff, and enabling us to reach this vision. Thank you very much. Champagne glasses are being passed around. Um, I will wait until you have your glasses charged and ask you to drink a brief toast with me. Okay. We made it, huh? I didn't expect that.